I love this question, Fester. Um, it tests whether you understand dividends. It tests whether you understand capitalization issue. Um, I really do like this question and I would really recommend that you study this question and make sure that you understand it and that you can do everything in the question. Fester Limited is a company that is listed on the JSE. Fester manufactures enzymes that are used by fast food change to bake hamburger rolls. Fester has a 30 November year end. Growth. Over the last few years, Fester has been growing very quickly in order to finance new projects. It has needed extra cash. In the past, it has generally acquired cash by taking out loans from the bank. Now, there is a new gyno-sized uh, enzyme. On 1st December 2009, Fester's development team decided to launch a new gyno-sized enzyme that would be used to bake a new gyno-sized roll for the fast food outlet called Gynosaur. In order to fund the new enzyme, Fester required more than 54 million rand. Fester CEO, Famil Alves, was reluctant to borrow more cash from the bank. He suggested that the cash would be sourced in the following ways. Number one, we're going to issue new shares to the market. Number two, settling some of the dividends declared in the prior year by issuing new ordinary shares, i.e. a capitalization issue. And number three, to issue preference shares to the bank. Now, the first one is issue of shares to the market. And second one is a capitalization issue. Then the preference share issue. Then the purchase of the new uh, enzyme producing machine. They give you other information. And the first question that they ask you, is FESTA a private or a public company? Justify your answer. Now, obviously, it is a public company. Um, FESTA is listed on the JSE, and it can only be public companies that is listed on the JSE. So for the first part of the answer, FESTA is a public company. A public company can be identified by also the name, Limited, that is um, um, at, the law, at the end of its name. Private companies is PTY Limited. The company specifies that the name of the company is FESTA Limited. We also know FESTA is a public company as it is listed on the JSE. Companies are only allowed to listen on the JSE if they are public companies. The second part of the question, question two, you see there's a lot of questions on this question. Um, I calculate the total cash that FESTA made available to fund the gyno-sized enzyme project. You need, to re you need not reduce any of the amounts by costs incurred. Okay, so we said already this new thing, machine, whatever, is going to cost 44 million rand. It is. And he has proposed all these things in order to raise the funds. He says, number one, issue of shares to the market. On 30 April 2009, Fester had 20 ordinary shares in issue. Fester wished to issue a maximum of 9.5 million shares at 2 rand 80 per share. So he wants to raise capital, 9.5 million, multiplied by 2 rand 80, and that will give him, they say you can ignore the cost element, so that's going to give him 26.6 .6 million rand. And then the share application process was completed, they received so much, they had to pay back, but the question that we're busy with is how much capital did you want to raise? Then, capitalization issue. On 30 November 2009, now remember we are now in 2010. So in the previous financial year, the directors declared, but they did not pay yet, a dividend of 19650. So at the end of that financial year, remember the year in East, East November, they declared a dividend of 19.6 million rand. Because of the extra cash that was required for the gyno-sized enzyme project, they decided to settle. This is now all about how we're going to pay the dividend. 60% of this dividend by issuing 3930,000 9, shares to the uh, shareholders, which were eligible for the dividends. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're not going to pay out the full amount in cash. We're going to give them share certificates amounting to 60% of the 
of that 19.6 million. The remaining 40% of the dividend will be settled in cash. So what are they going to save by doing the capitalization issue? They're going to save 19,650 multiplied by 60%. So that gives them saving in total of 11,790,000. Then they also said, well, they're going to issue preference shares. They think that they, they propose to issue 291,500, 6% non cumulative preference shares on 31 January at 20 Rand per share. So, what do they want to raise here? They want to raise 291,500 shares at 20 Rand a share, which equals 5,830,000. I so said, if declared, the preference dividends would be paid to the bank annually in arrears on 31 January. This had no preference shares in issue in prior years. Great. So the first part of the question says, calculate the total cash that FESTA made available to fund this new machine. It is our Orkney shares, 26.6 million. The saving by making the capitalization issue instead of paying out the dividend in cash, 11.7 million, and the preference shares of 5.8 million. So they're going to raise in total gross before any costs are taken into consideration, 44,220,000 rand. But now, Number three, prepare on 15 December 2009. Remember, that is just after the year end of November 2009, where they have declared the dividend. The journal entry to account for the settlement of the ordinary dividend declared on 30 November 2009. So that is all about the capitalization issue. On 30 November, they declared a dividend of 19650 they have decided to settle 60% in the new financial year, the settlement takes place. In the old financial year, the dividend was declared. So 60% by the issue of shares and 40% by cash. Now here it is quite important that you understand what entry was posted as at 30 November 2009, at the end of last financial year. They declared a dividend of 19650. So dividend slash retained earnings was debited with 19650. Shareholders for dividends, they tell us here in the additional information that all our shareholders are natural persons. A natural person is a person like you and me. A company is not a natural person. So all those shareholders um, on natural persons, so the full 20% dividend withholding tax is applicable on them. Let's see, this is the wrong one. So, 19650, remember on 30 June, 80% would have been posted to shareholders for dividends in the statement of financial position, 15720. And 20% would have been posted to the receiver of revenue, 3930. Now let's redo this whole calculation from scratch. Let's say the dividend was 19,650. We are now going to settle 60% of this dividend by ways of a capitalization issue, which equal 11,790,000. 40% is going to be settled in cash. So 40% of 19,650, that equals an amount of 7,860. Only the cash dividend is subject to dividend withholding tax. So irrespective of the entry that we have passed on 30 November 2009, where we credited that full 20% on the dividend to SARS, that is not strictly sp speaking right because it, it would have been correct if that whole dividend was um, settled by ways of a cash payment. Now, only 40% of that dividend is going to be settled in cash. 
and only 20% of that 40% is now subject to dividend withholding tax. So if we now put this uh, schematically for ourselves, it means that 80% is going to be paid the cash payment to the shareholders themselves, and 20% of this dividend owed to the shareholders is going to be paid over to the receiver of revenue on behalf of the shareholder. Guys, I cannot stress enough that this is not a company tax. This is a tax that the shareholder is paying. The only thing that the company does is, it says, instead of paying you the full 7860, I'm going to give you 80%, and then instead of you paying the receiver 20%, I'm going to give 20% of your dividend that belongs to you, to the receiver of revenue. So I just administer this dividend on behalf of the receiver of revenue. Now, the easiest way to do the correction of this uh, entries that's currently lying in our books is to take out whatever is lying there. The dividend was declared for 19650 last year. There's nothing wrong with that. That stays exactly the same as it was. That is 100% true, so there's nothing. It's all about the settlement of the dividend, which takes place in this year, that we have to do some entries. So we want to take out our shareholders for dividends. So we're going to debit that account, 15720. We want to clear the receiver of revenues account, which we have created at the end of last year. So we're going to debit that 3930. Now, what are we going to take to ordinary share capital? We're going to take that 11790, i.e. 60% of the dividend, to ordinary share capital, 11790. You just write there, ordinary share capital. So that is the 11790. Now we're going to pay the shareholders, so bank shareholders 6288. And we're going to pay bank SARS 1572. And then if I add all everything up, those three items will add up and it will cancel out those three items. So if you get something like this, where a dividend was declared in the previous year, write down for yourself the journal entry which was passed in the previous year. And make sure whatever you're going to do this year is going to cancel out shareholders for dividends as well as the receiver of revenue. So I took out completely what was lying there. And what did I do? I actually posted what I should have posted in the beginning. The only difference is that I'm not going to have shareholders for dividends because I've paid them now. So that's going to be replaced by bank. And I'm not going to post SARS dividends withholding tax. I'm going to pay them now, SARS and bank. The fourth part of the question, calculate the depreciation expense related to the new enzyme producing machine. Now here we've bought the machine on 28 February for 42 million Rand. The machine had an estimated useful life of five years and it had an estimated residual value of 6 million. Okay. Then the machine was available for use on 31 March 2010. And they start producing dinosized enzymes on 30 April. What date are we interested in? We are interested in the date on which the machine was available to be used for the purpose it was acquired for. So our depreciation then would be 42 million, less 6 million, divided by 5, multiplied then as from the 31st of um, March to the 30th of November 2010. So that gives us 8 months, and that gives us total depreciation of 4.8 million rand. The next question. Discuss how Festus should account for Famil Adams selling his 3 million shares on 16 November and the effect that this will have on Festa. Uh, where was that? On 16 November 2010, Famil Adams sold 3 million of the shares that they held personally in Festa to the market at 6 rand per share. How is that going to affect the company? Guys, it's not going to affect the company at all. Why not? 
It's a private transaction between the owner, Famil Adam, and whoever is going to buy the shares. This is publicly traded shares. Any person can buy the share. Any person can sell the share. When does it affect the company? It only affects the company with an initial share issue. So where a company issues new shares, that is when you raise the capital. For example, yeah, the new cap the, the new shares that he has issued, this issue issue of shares to the market, that 26.6 million, that is new shares that the company has issued, so he will raise the capital, so that will affect his accounting records. But who is going to buy these shares? When they're going to sell that share, it has no impact on the company. The company has already raised the money for that share issue. Then number six, provide the journal entries for the underwriters commission and the share issue costs of the ordinary shares issued on 31 December. So that is this first one. Now we are going to raise 26.6 million rand. Um, the bank underwrite the share issue and in return for a commission of 3%. So our um, underwriters commission is going to be 3% of that 26.6 million rand and that gives us a total of 798,000 rand. The share application process was completed on 31 December at which stage Festa had received 29 million so there's clearly an oversubscription there in cash from the applicants. Festa issued 9.5 million shares to 4,000 shareholders on 2 January 2010 and incurred a share issue cost of 20 rand per shareholder. Surplus cash received was returned to the applicants. So there was also a share issue cost equal to 4,000 shareholders multiplied by 20 rand per shareholder. So that gave us 80,000 rand. Festus accounting policy in respect of share issue cost is to maximize its distributable reserves. So if he wants to maximize his distributable reserves, he does not want to write off unnecessary stuff against that retained earnings. So therefore, he's going to write off the share issue cost against the ordinary share capital account. So we're going to debit ordinary share capital, statement of changes in equity, 798,000. We are going to credit bank 798,000, and that's the underwriters commission. Then we're going to debit ordinary share capital with 80,000, and we're going to credit bank with 80,000. And that is the additional ones. Please, here. Oh, shucks. Remember that this is statement of changes in equity. It does not want to add that. Statement of changes in equity, statement of financial position. Statement of changes in equity, statement of financial position. Then the last one. Repeat this the statement of changes in equity for the year in the 30 to, uh, November 2010. You need not include opening balances, closing balances, and a total column. So basically what they want you to do is to record all the changes that took place in the current financial year. So if we go to the statement of changes in equity, ordinary share capital, brief share capital, and retained earnings. Great, share issue, 26.6 million rand. That was the amount that they've raised, and against that was the underwriters commission and the share issue costs. So the share issue costs and the underwriters commissions, uh, the two of them together, equals 878,000 rand. And then remember our capitalization issue. So when we transferred this account, when we did the 60% um, capitalization issue of the dividend, we credited ordinary share capital with 11790. 
So that is that 11790. Our pref share capital, which we have issued, that was uh, this lot here, the 291,000 times 20, 5830,000. Oh, so that equals then 5830,000. Oh, Retained earnings, now um, that would only be the pref share dividend on these new preference shares that we've issued. So that would be 5830, that is 6% shares, 5830, 6% cumulative shares, and it was issued as at the 31st of January. So therefore, as from the 1st of February, I have to make provision for that preference dividend. So that gives us 10 months multiplied by 6%, multiplied by 5830, which gives us a total of 291,500. Then profit for the year. And that is quite important. Uh, sorry, that's a little bit cold. Profit for the year. Fester made an after tax profit of 2444300 for the year ended 30 November 2010. This does not include the depreciation expense on the new enzyme producing machine. You may assume that SARS's wear and tear allowance is equal to the accounting calculation for depreciation. Then you ignore that because then it means he allows your depreciation expense as in the income statement as a tax deductible expense. There's no difference between what he says you can deduct and what you said that is going to be deducted. Assume a tax rate of 28% and a dividend withholding tax of 20%. Okay, so they give us the of the tax profit. Now we have worked out the depreciation on this new machine. But depreciation is a pre-tax expense. So we cannot deduct a pre-tax expense from an of the tax profit. We first have to convert this of the tax profit to a before tax profit. Then we're going to deduct the depreciation. Then we're going to get an adjusted profit before tax, which in this case will also be equal to the taxable income. And then we're going to determine 28% of that amount to determine a new profit after tax. So let me show you what I'm talking about. We start off with a 12444300, which is the profit after tax. If we want to convert it to a before tax figure, we're going to divide it by 72%. Tax rate is 28%, 100 plus 28 equals 72. So if we gross it up to a before tax figure, it gives us 17,283,750. We have worked out the depreciation on that asset somewhere there. 4.8 million rand. So the depreciation on the asset was 4.8 million, which we're going to deduct from the profit before tax. Very important, profit before tax. And then we're going to get our actual profit before tax, which in this case is also equal to our taxable income, because there's no changes from the way that we are going to treat income tax uh, uh, that we're going to treat accounting profit from what the accounting uh, of what the receiver is going to treat tax taxable income. Now we're going to determine 28 percent of that amount and that will give us the profit of the tax of 8988300. So under retained earnings profit for the year 8988300.